Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the start of Women's Health Week. We're kicking off the week discussing two types of care that all women should all women should be connected with, primary care and gynecology. So today we've brought in Dr. Priya Dixit Patel from Christiana Care Primary Care at Smyrna and women's health nurse, nurse practitioner Heike Kuhn coming to us live from our Concord campus. Thank you both for joining us. Please take a moment to introduce yourselves and your practices. Hi, I'm Priya Patel. I'm a family physician at Smyrna Family Practice. Um, I've been a physician for 22 years and uh, really enjoy seeing all, all varieties in the office. And I'm Heike Akin. I'm a nurse practitioner at Concord GYN. I've been a nurse practitioner in women's health for almost 25 years, a nurse for over 30. Fantastic. So between the two of you, there's so much to talk about, so much important information to share. But let's start big picture. Why is it important? that women have relationships with providers like yourselves? So I think this is like one of the most important relationships you can have outside of your friends and family, right? So your primary care physician is your partner, you know, uh, somebody that you can discuss your health goals with, you can share your family history with. And that sort of starts like, you know, the, the approach for a physician to look at the patient in a holistic way. I, I tell patients, you know, it's kind of like um, having a puzzle, right? You give me one piece and you start to put the pieces together. And, and over a period of time, you know, that's what allows us to better serve our patients and better care for them. And I, I cannot think of a time, a decade, a season in a woman across the lifespan where she wouldn't need gynecologic care and screening. Absolutely. So I think the best way to have this conversation, you know, you talked about across the lifespan is to break this up into age groups. So we'll start with the teenagers and young adults. Dr. Dixon Patel, when should that woman transition from, you know, the yearly physicals, you need your sports physical in high school, you need that physical to start college, you need to make sure you have all your vaccinations, but then sometimes you get into college, you become a young adult and your relationship with primary care kind of falls off. You think you're healthy, you think you're fine, you don't really think about it. So why and how often should they be coming to see you? So, it, you know, we, we do see um, some providers see pediatric patients. And so sometimes that transition is smoother. You kind of see them you know, when you're in your childhood and then you can transition them to the young adult. Um, and, and sometimes folks transfer from their pediatricians. But really, I would say any time it is good to start because you know we can sort of start the foundation of your of your care and again you know uh, have a chance to take a look at what your health goals are um, you know and and take opportunities to kind of talk about lifestyle modifications and potential risk factors and appropriate screenings and immunizations that you need at that age group. You know the other thing is young folks will uh, oftentimes need to be seen for sick visits. And I always think it's better to, to see your regular doctor um, for a cold, for a UTI, for, for an illness, because we can kind of understand um, based on that continuity of care, what, what the most appropriate treatment would be versus going, you know, to emergent care, you know, like regularly for those things. It's better to do that with your time of Absolutely. And Heike, I know so many women are different in terms of when they start seeing a GYN. But what is the average age and when should a teenager or young adult think about starting that relationship? So typically um, a woman has to, or doesn't have to, but would have a pelvic exam and a GYN exam when she turns 21 and needs pap smear screening. But we certainly see plenty of young women and teens. The big news from the GYN front is that young people and teens that come in typically do not need a GYN or pelvic exam. In past years, that was a tremendous barrier to teens accessing either information about birth control, problem solving for their periods, STD screening. Um, but that is the big news on our front is that they typically do not need an exam. That's great. So let's transition a little bit here to women maybe approaching middle age, done having children, so not seeing that OB provider. They you know, are maybe have young children who are going to the pediatrician and they're not making their own health a priority. So Dr. Dixit Patel, what should that woman be doing with you? And the provider from a primary care perspective, what kind of screenings do they need to keep in mind to put themselves and their health first? So I will often tell you know, my, my, my friends, my patients, my family members that 
you know, typically women tend to be sort of this, the center of their families, the center of their households. So, you know, their women are accessing the health system much more frequently than men, whether it's for their children or for themselves or for their elderly parents and even nagging their husbands to go see the doctor. I feel like women typically test sort of set the tone for health in the family. And so, you know, you want to show your children and your family members that it's important to go and, and visit the doctor, um, you know, on a regular basis so that you can screen for things that later on may be an issue, right? Like things like hypertension, diabetes, heart disease. And then also at this time in, in your life, you want to also be thinking about all the preventive things that you can be doing, right? Like some modifications, like you know, what is a healthy diet for me? And, you know, if you have a restricted diet, sometimes, you know, you need to discuss that further with your doctor. Um, you know, how much alcohol is okay to have? You know, what are sort of the barriers to care that you may have? Um, you know, a lot of times I think about mental health issues. Women have a lot of different hats that they have to wear and that can be stressful, and, you know, with the pandemic. Um, worrying about your children and other family members. Um, we are seeing similar depression and anxiety uh, in our patients. So, you know, just for all of those things, it, it's, it, it's a good place to start um, to connect to someone that you can and trust and confide in and share those things with. And Heike, what is a woman in her 40s and her 50s, what is her experience like at your practice? So once women kind of leave um, that childbearing era and move into their 40s and 50s, those are actually some of the most exciting um, parts of um, women's health. So in your 40s, um, certainly birth control, mammogram screening. There are some women that are um, candidates for additional breast cancer screening, such as MRI. We talk about hereditary cancer screening. And the big issue is always changes in menstrual pattern perimenopause, those years leading up toward menopause, sometimes tremendously heavy bleeding can be a real problem. We have so many wonderful fixes um, for all those things. So in terms of understanding what's normal and what is not normal as you head towards perimenopause and beyond, and certainly that menopausal transition with hot flashes and night sweats, um, lots of changes there. And people often suffer for years um, before they finally come in for a really frank discussion about what to do about those symptoms. So you mentioned that really frank discussion. Let's kind of transition to that age then. You know, you're you're hitting menopause. You are hopefully having that conversation with your providers. You are in your office talking about that. But then maybe you know, symptoms kind of go away. You're kind of living with menopause. You think you're okay. Does that mean you stop going to the GYN? Right. So there's a lot of confusion about the concept of, gosh, if I don't need a pap smear every year, does that mean I should be seen every year? And the answer is yes. Certainly there are lots of things we're looking for on the GYN exam other than just doing a pap smear. For example, um, vulvar skin changes and vulvar cancers, evaluating for prolapse and bleeding abnormalities and things like that. There's also, are there some guidelines out there for when to exit typical screening? For example, many women can stop pap smear, pap smear screening at 65. But there are many women that cannot stop pap smear screening at 65. So there's a lot of confusion about that recommendation. Certainly, even if you stop pap smear screening, there's so much benefit from the regular GYN care. So many women um, will never have the opportunity to discuss um, sexual problems, vaginal dryness, urine incontinence, prolapse issues. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. So there's so much um, that is pertinent to GYN care other than just doing a yearly pap smear. Absolutely. And Dr. Dixit Patel, it only gets more important, I would assume, with age to continue to have a relationship with you. Absolutely. Um, you know, women tend to suffer from um, more chronic diseases compared to men. Um, so we definitely want to have the opportunity to screen for things like diabetes, cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, the cancer screening uh, guidelines for colon cancer have changed that they do actually lower now 45 years of age. You should start with cancer screening um, unless you have a family history, then the guidelines are quite different if they may be younger. Um, but we want to, you know, offer there's also, you know, you can get a colonoscopy, but now there's a hydrocolobar test for those that were sort of theory of getting a colonoscopy. There are other tests left, um, available. And then, you know, we, we want to kind of screen for um, things that, uh, again, 
lifestyle modifications that we can make to sort of head off those diseases down the road. For 65 and older, we also want to do um, osteoporosis screening and um, prevention and treatment options with the individual patients. Um, and then also screening for things like hepatitis C has been recommended by the CDC as well. And then in, in addition, any family history that you would have that would want additional so let's talk about how your two offices connect. So if a woman is in a primary care practice and is flagged for high blood pressure and is being you know, treated through primary care for her high blood pressure, how does the OBGYN practice understand that if she is pregnant? How does all of that connect? Yeah, so uh, the great thing is that you know, most providers can sort of connect with each other and, and we can um, encourage our patients. Um, you know, I've had my colleagues in GYN send me a message saying, I'm seeing our mutual patient and the blood pressure is high. Can we, can we get them in to adjust the medications or talk about treatment? And that's great. And then I also have my patients, you know, I think because they're so much more aware of the importance of health, um, but my patients will reach out to me and say, you know, I checked my blood pressure at the GYN office, it's high, you know, what can we do? And I mean, so I, I do like that sort of that we're collectively. Uh, partnering together on focusing on health. Um, that's, that's, that's a sign that like patients are much more aware of the importance of uh, discussing these things and being aware of their health. And certainly that ease of collaboration, being able to see a primary care op, um, office's notes, being able to communicate with primary care directly through the messaging system, through the patient portal, patients are engaged. Um, so that's really um, a tremendous benefit. Definitely the benefit of Christiana Care and our vast number of practices and being able to all work together on that. Absolutely. So this question for both of you, you know, what should women keep in mind about their health? You know, Peter, you mentioned how much drinking is too much drinking. You mentioned the screenings and the blood pressure and diabetes. And it just seems like a lot, especially for women who already have a whole lot going on. So let's talk a little bit about just the simple things that women should be keeping in mind every day. Yeah, so I always say that if you're taking care of your kids and your um, parents and your husband and your partners, you know, um, you need to take care of yourself first to be able to sort of support all of those other people in your life. And so, you know, I want women to remember that um, the number one causes of death are, are heart disease and cancers um, and diabetes. And so really being mindful about uh, ways of preventing those things and ways of screening for those things is really for a fair amount. Um, you know, thinking about making health choices um, in your diet, moderate amount of alcohol if they can get, avoiding things like smoking, um, considering doing more physical activity, you know, um, to, to keep your weight in a healthy range and um, exercising, you know, sort of committing to those things just the way that we commit to our, our families and our jobs. We want to commit to our health in that way as well. Absolutely. Very much so. And every decade is really just the platform for the health that a woman has in the next decade. The smoking risk, um, the dietary considerations, the heart disease risk. Um, so every decade is just the platform for good health or not such great health in the next decade. And particularly in women in their 60s and 70s and beyond, that is absolutely crucial, particularly with fracture risk. It's so many crossroads with primary care, but for sure, it's the platform for the next 10, 10 years of health. That's a great way to put it. So if women are watching and need to reconnect with health providers or maybe connect with one of you for the first time, if it's a younger woman, how can they be in touch with your practices? So they can certainly, um, you know, call our offices. There's um, direct booking available. There's a patient portal that you can request. Um, many different ways to, to reach us. And Likewise. All of, that, all of that information will be in the comments below in this live video. So if you have any more questions or comments for Dr. Dixit Patel or Heike Kuhn, please continue to put those in the comments and we will get to them after this live ends. There's also a link to both Christiana Care Primary Care and our OBGYN services in the comments below if you're interested in connecting with care. Thank you both so much for joining us and have a great afternoon. Thank Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.